students, it's Mrs. DeRoe, your image design teacher, and today we are going to have so much fun. We're going to be, let's see here, there, trying to get some fun animation going here. Ah, lovely. We're going to be talking about Andy Warhol, pop art, and color theory. Let's talk about the Utah State Standards. First of all, for fine arts, media art, we'll be looking at the create strand. Standard two, apply aesthetic criteria in developing, proposing, and refining artistic ideas, plans, prototypes, and production processes for media arts productions, considering original inspirations, goals, and presentation contexts. Whew, that's a fancy way of saying to create something. And then, you should be reading these out loud with me, by the way. Present, standard one. Integrate various arts, media arts forms, and content into unified media arts productions, considering the reaction and interaction of the audience. Respond, standard three. Analyze the intent meanings, and reception of a variety of media artworks, focusing on personal and cultural contexts. Connect, standard two. Explain and demonstrate the use of media artworks to expand meaning and knowledge and create cultural experiences. Standard three for Digital Media One Utah State Standards for those of you who are earning your certification. Visual design concepts, students will recognize and apply effective visual design concepts. Objective two, color theory. One, recognize and apply color properties such as hue, saturation, and value. Two, recognize and apply color schemes such as complementary, analogous, triadic, and monochromatic. And Digital Media One Standard Five Objective One is 2D graphics. Students will understand, create, manipulate, and appropriately use bitmap raster graphics. So in the last video for this project, you noticed that when I zoomed in really close, there were little pixels. Those are also called bits and they're arranged on a grid and that's why it's called bit map graphics. Um, another term is raster graphics. There are several objectives that we are going to be hitting today with this project. We'll be hitting number one, identify graphic formats. So we've already identified this, but we are exporting our image as a JPEG and we are saving our GIMP files. GIMP files have the extension .xcf. Two, we are acquiring image assets. You're either using your own personal digital photos or as I showed you in the last video, you're going to Creative Commons to find some public domain images that you can use and manipulate without being sued. Four, utilize appropriate visual design and image composition techniques. I'm going to teach you a technique today. Five, export import images for project requirements. I want you, whoops, that should be a G. I want your JPEGs to be less than 500 kilobytes, please. Six, crop, resize, and transform your images is likely going to happen today. Seven, edit an image. You'll be definitely doing that. Eight, use layers and selection tools. Today you're going to get to use layers. Nine, apply filters and effects. Ten, adjust color and contrast, which you've done in the last video. And eleven, utilize color selection techniques, and you did that in the last video as well. So that covers all of the standards. I know, whew, that was a lot of them. But we do cover a lot in a little bit in this class. Since our blocks are pretty short, we have to get as much done, more power per byte. So I want to give credit to uh, Emily Borg. I was just doing some research today on Andy Warhol and the way that he does uh, color theory. And I found this great blog and I thought, gosh, I'd really love for the students to read this. I think I'll 
you know, attach this as a link. But I know how y'all are. You don't read what I put on there. You don't watch my videos. You don't read my stuff. I know you. So I'm going to have to read it for you, right? <laughs> and I thought it would be more fun to put pictures with it. So today we're going to be discussing Andy Warhol. Who is Andy Warhol? Andy Warhol, debatably one of the most influential artists of the 20th century, created some of the world's most widely recognized pieces of contemporary art. During the 1950s, companies grew rapidly and manufacturing improved so that commodities could be produced faster and cheaper than ever before. The United States growing industrial nature inspired Warhol's mechanical method of creating his prints and using color. In doing this, he challenged modernism and modern artists of the time. His subject matter made people question the modernist perspective of what could be considered art. To further embody the industrial process he chose to imitate, Warhol called his art studio the factory. Here are some pictures of Warhol working in his factory. Look at all of those screen prints. Those must be his assistants. Andy Warhol's revolutionary style, including his unique process of mass producing artwork and his break from traditional use of color, led him to be both praised and criticized for his experimentation in visual art, even in today's modern society. Along with Warhol's machine-like printing procedure, his unique use of colors in his artwork gives viewers of his paintings a similar feeling of disconnect. Warhol's prints are images of popular items such as Campbell's soup cans, or a famous celebrities. Do you recognize this celebrity? Muhammad Ali! And that's obviously not a soup can. Brillo pads, remember those? Color is often used in art to evoke a certain emotion from the audience. And before Andy Warhol and pop art, artists of the Impressionist and Fauvism movement used color to convey different sensations and emotions. Warhol, however, does not depict any sort of emotion or sensation through his choice of color. One of the elements that he does heavily focus on is space. Remember learning about that? Positive and negative space. Look at his treatment of the positive and negative space and you'll notice in his artworks that negative space is just as important and powerful as his positive space. This is a really good lesson for all of you developing artists to take a look at his work and think about how he uses negative space because a lot of young artists have a tendency to only be thinking about their subject, which is the positive space, right? And they don't give any consideration to how the space, the background, the negative space also contributes to an artwork. Instead, his paintings and prints follow various color schemes that are completely unrelated to any specific emotion. And uh, one of the principles of design that Andy Warhol uses is repetition. You see that a lot. Who's this? Elvis Presley. So color theory, pretty big deal. We've got complementary colors across the wheel. We've got triad. We've got split complementary. We've got double complementary, tetrad, and analogous. These are just different ways that you can combine the colors on the color wheel to get different effects. And of course, these are only six. I mean, there's obviously an infinite number of way that, ways that you could combine the colors. One of the four that we are going to focus on today is monochromatic. Mono means one. Chrome, color. So monochromatic is when you use tints and shades of just one color. 
And in this one, here's an example of the way Warhol uses scale and perspective also to resize his subjects. So these are the hues. They're just the basic colors themselves. Tints are when we add white. Tones are when we add gray. And shades are when we add black. So remember, monochromatic is when we're using tints and shades of just one color. And that's what those terms are. The second of the four schemes we're looking at today is complementary. This is when colors are used that are opposites of each other on the color wheel. Okay, so can you see in this image which two colors are complementary? That's right, red and green. And in this image, we've got eh, kind of a purple and green. It's not an exact match to the wheel that we have here, but it's pretty close. The third of the four schemes is analogous. This is where you use three to five colors that are adjacent or next to each other on the color wheel. So when we look at this lovely painting print of Grace Jones, we see her red lipstick, we see the pink in the background, we see a little bit of these purples all the way up to blue. So monochromatic using this side of the color wheel, or not monochromatic, sorry, analogous using these colors and hues and shades and tints that are next to each other on the color wheel. Triadic, tri means three, right? So um, this looks like some kind of, you know, witchcraft happening here. This is where you use three colors that are evenly spaced on the wheel, thus giving you kind of that triangular thing happening. This is a really good example of seeing that red, blue, and yellow together. And who is this? Beethoven. Warhol did not seek to convey any sort of emotion by choosing these colors, but rather he decided to create this piece using a complementary color scheme. So his, his decisions were primarily, you can't really tell, but that's, that's green. Hopefully it's turning out green. Looks a little bit pale for, for what I'm seeing, but you kind of get that this pink and this green are complementary colors. They're directly across from each other on the color wheel. Another example of the way Warhol used color is in his print titled Skull. This piece contains both a neutral, so neutral is kind of like, you know, it doesn't have like red, blue, yellow in it. It has more like tans, you know, colors that are just kind of lacking, you know, they're desaturated, desaturated, there's not a lot of color, there's not a lot of saturation in it. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> contains both neutral and monochromatic, mono, right, one color scheme. So we're looking at black that has had white added to it to give you different values. And although it appears that the colors that were used in that last image were of the skull because the colors were the dark colors associated with death and decay, it, it appears that maybe he was trying to connect that emotional side with death and decay via color, but he made several prints of the same image using different colors that an audience would not associate with that morbid feeling of death, like purples and pinks and baby blues. So you can see that he really is trying to take a theme like death and use color to disconnect from that theme. This shows how Warhol disassociated color with sensation and instead chose to use color as a way to simply mass produce similar pieces. This is apparent as well in his well-known Prince of Marilyn Monroe, which he printed shortly after her death in 1962. 
just as he did in his other pieces of artwork, Warhol simply used various color schemes, and more often than not, when it comes to the Maryland series, multiple color schemes are used in one print. The colors he chose, however, are meant to accentuate the beauty and glamour associated with Marilyn Monroe's persona. Warhol was very much about beauty and glamour. So Andy Warhol was a man who created pieces that blurred the line between commercial and fine art. His industrial method and desire for mass production took the personality of the artist away from the work, leaving him disconnected from his art. And Warhol was successful in doing the same thing with his use of color by disassociating sensation with his colors and instead developed different color schemes for his artwork. Because of Warhol's ability to take risks and experiment with context and color, he remains a hugely influential artist after his death. So that brings us to our project, okay? Today in your project, you're going to demonstrate each of the four color schemes. So you are going to create like a quadratic <laughs> artwork. And in your first quadrant, you're going to have a monochromatic color scheme. In your second quadrant, you're going to have a complementary. I wonder if we should do like the X and Y and say, you know, this is quadrant one, two, three, and four, because isn't that how it works in math? Well, if we were in the mathematical quadrant one, it would be complementary. Quadrant two, monochromatic, quadrant three, analogous, and quadrant four, triadic. So always trying to integrate a little bit of math there. Fun times. Um, here's just an example. So here we go. We've got in quadrant one, our complementary colors. So we've got purple and yellow that are directly across from each other. Quadrant two, we've got our monochromatic color scheme. So these are all just different various tints and shades of purple. And then in quadrant three, we've got the analogous. So you're gonna find like these reds and purples, hues here and oranges all on the same side of the color wheel. And then triadic, you're gonna see that triangle where the red, the yellow, and the blue are equally spaced from each other on the color wheel. So that's your assignment. That's the challenge. How are you gonna do that? Let me show you. Well, you're going to go ahead and open up GIMP. Remember that image that we colorized the other day? We're going to use this as the foundation. So what you're going to do is just go select all and control copy. You could also do control C. It's control C, copy, <laughs> sorry. Um, you can see right here, you could also go to edit, copy, okay? And then we're going to, while that is attached to the clipboard, we're going to say file, create from clipboard, Nope, file, new, there we go. When we do file new, what it does is it pulls up the um, image size for us. And so now you need to grab your calculator. Ah, ha, 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 C-A-L-C-U, that's how I get my calculator. I just do a little search for it and pull it up. So got my calculator here. Now what we're doing is, like I said, we're gonna do like a quad, quadratic type artwork. Okay, so there's going to be four of these squares. So if this is the dimension of one, we're going to have to double it on the width to get two side by side and double the height to get the two up and down. So 1280 times two equals 2560. I'll type that in there, 2560. And then we have 960 times two, and of course, you're gonna use the numbers that are on yours, not mine. I know sometimes people are like, oh, Mrs. Hart's typing in 980, I better do that too. Yeah, okay, so this is 1920, at least I hope it is, okay. And then um, right here, I can, uh, it says that it's landscape, so perfect, and I'll just click okay. And for some reason, I just have this lovely tan beige background. Um, you know, I think I'm just going to switch this and um, I can just make my background color. And I think the best way to do it is just make sure that you have the layer selected and whatever's in the foreground you're going to paint. So I'm just going to put the black back in the foreground and I'll grab this little um, fill bucket right here. 
Just click on that and then click on the canvas and it will change it to that color. That's pretty groovy. And then you can go ahead and just start saving. We're gonna file save as, um, what is this? I'm gonna put your first name and last initial, and this is project one, Andy Warhol tribute. Pretty cool. .xcf is correct because we are saving this as an editable GIMP file. I've got it in my 2017-18 folder, so I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Okay, remember how we had had that copied onto our clipboard? I can go ahead and go uh, Edit, Paste, and that's going to paste it right in. Now, I am using my paint bucket, so I need to get out of using my paint bucket right now. I want to move this image up to the corner and I'm also going to go view, zoom, fit image to window to make sure that I can see my entire canvas. Let's take the move tool and oh, this is a floating selection. Look at that. You've got to right click on your floating selections and you have to put to new layer. Now it's a new layer. It's called the pasted layer. I am just for going to call that layer, well, yeah, let's call this one monochromatic. So just double click, monochromatic, okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to also right click, I just locked it, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to layer to image size, nope, image No, not gonna do that yet, hold on. First, move it over. Okay, so just get that right in the top corner. Just do your best to get it there, that's perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and hit Control C and Control V and let's make another floating selection layer. Let's right click on that and we'll say to new layer and we're gonna double click on that. Let's call that our, we have monochromatic. We need to do, I know, analogous and try it on the bottom. Complementary. Complementary. All right, excellent, hit enter. And then grab that, make sure you have your move tool still, I still did, um, and move that over here to that quadrant. That was, remember, quadrant one. Was complimentary okay and now we're gonna control V again it's already on the clipboard right click to new layer and this one's going to be my analogous double click analogous enter grab the move tool oh where did it paste it to there it is okay there's my analogous layer and I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control V again and right click on the layer to new layer. Call this one triadic, T-R-I-A-D-I-C. Hit enter and grab that. Here it is, nice. Okay, so we're all set up and ready to go. That wasn't too hard, was it? Whew, take a deep breath. Okay, and then remember I was saying we're gonna have to like change the image to the layer size. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go down to my monochromatic layer. You'll notice that you can see these little dotted lines. They're not marching ants, but that is showing me how large this image is. I want that image to be the entire size of the canvas. So I'm going to right click, go to layer, and then do layer to image size. <laughs> Let's hope this is right. Yes, now you can see that that layer is the entire size of this whole image, your canvas. Go to your complementary layer, right click, click on, well don't click on it, just put your cursor over layer, bring over your dialog box and do layer to image size. Okay, come on up to your analogous layer, right click, layer, layer to image size. 
and then triadic, right click, layer, layer to image size. Perfect. Now, you are always gonna have these separate layers and the reason why we use layers is because First of all, if you mess up on one layer, that's only one layer that you messed up on. <laughs> and it allows me to see your work. So when you're not working in another layer, if you feel like you want to lock it down, that's great. So I'm going to lock all of the layers except for the one that I'm working in. When I lock it, it means that I can't make any changes to it. So I'm in my monochromatic layer. And if you remember, monochromatic is when we're using tints and shades of just one color. And once again, these are hues, so your tints are when you're adding white. You've got tones too, I didn't mention that, but those are part of monochromatic and your shades, right? So essentially, you just need to decide which hue you're going to use for that first quadrant. I think I'm going to go with purples. So what I will do is select my my well it's moving around because I have my new move tool so I'm actually moving the entire layer you can hit control Z if you just want to undo um, what you did but you're just going up to your magic wand okay your fuzzy select tool and click on increase your threshold and just shift get your entire and that was part of the reason why I wanted to go in for you guys and there. Yeah, just bam. Get in there and just get everything selected. I'm going to increase my threshold more. Okay, so that should get it all pretty good. And I did happen to select a little bit of stuff from out here, so I'm going to just grab my lasso tool and hold down control to just subtract that. Okay, and I was saying I was going to do purple. I've already got some purple right there, so I'm just going up to color, hue and saturation, and I can just change the hue here, find some purple. Here's some purple. Nice. And there's a lightness feature on here and I can, but like I was saying, let's do adjust the lightness with the contrast. So hold off on the lightness. Let's go with saturation. How saturated do you want it? Adjust your saturation wheel. I guess you can't really see me adjusting that, can you? It's over on the other screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and you don't want to desaturate. All right. I'm going to go with that and I can see right here that I've got a little strip of water so I'm going to control Z for now I'm just going to cancel that and I'm going to hold down my control make sure I have my lasso tool and I'll just get in there and get that out of there all right colors hue and saturation going for purple all right so there we go Nice, liking that. I'll just go ahead and click OK. So I got lots of saturation. And then remember how I was telling you, I always am going to want you to do brightness and contrast. OK, so be sure to add some more contrast. Adjust your lightness as you need to based on what you just did to get it the way you like it. OK, and then I just have the sky so I'm going to just use that fuzzy tool again, the magic wand is also called, and I'm just going to hit shift. It's getting the purple and stuff down there, but you know what? Man, that could be really cool because I was thinking about that the other day, the way the sky would actually be reflected into the water a little bit. So I think I'm gonna like play into that somewhat. Um, and I'm going to grab my and I could actually zoom in a little bit more so I can see the whole image that I'm working on. That would actually be pretty cool. Let me zoom out just a touch. Hold down control to zoom out. All right, grab a hold of that lasso tool. Notice I'm always having to save because I lose my RAM. 
and hold down control just to erase something that you didn't want to be a part of your selection. I think I'm gonna keep some of this in here, um, but not all of it. Bam. Where did I start? Okay. And I'm just erasing. Maybe. Yeah, it's actually kind of hard to think about what I'm doing right now. I'm having a moment where I'm like, what am I doing? Am I holding down the right key? I can't find where I started. <laughs> there it is. Okay, I can hold down control again and get rid of all of this over here. And maybe some of this. Okay, but I want some of that up here to be reflecting into the water. And so I think I got a little bit of my neck in here. Let's just go with it, okay. So I'm going to color, hue and saturation, and I'm going for a purple hue, I know that. Just have to figure out where that's at. There's a purple hue, and I can saturate it more if I want to. Or desatch, I don't want black and white. <laughs> so I'm fully saturating it. I think that'll work but look at how my water ended up being it's totally different so that's not gonna work so trial and error control Z control Z control Z I'm gonna go back to this moment right here <laughs> and I am just going to get my fuzzy select tool and this is where you have too much threshold so control Z now I'm gonna decrease my threshold this is where you can see that that threshold was too high. Hold shift, still picking a little bit more than what I want it to. Over here on this side, it looks to be mostly okay. Not that great, unfortunately. But I am gonna have to do a little bit of lassoing. It won't be too bad. I'm just gonna hit control and I'm just gonna deselect all of that and I'm gonna hit control and deselect all of that. Okay, and if I wanted to get a little bit closer here, I could. But I think on the horizon line, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. I didn't like how that was in a straight line. Okay, so let's do this. Colors, hue and saturation. Okay, finding that purple hue, saturating it adjusting it, making sure it's just the right hue that I wanted, clicking OK. Then um, do your brightness and contrast, colors, brightness, contrast. You always want to do brightness and contrast. I like that. And my lightness, do I want it lighter or darker? I really think I want it darker. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm going with that. Okay, I'm clicking OK and then select none. Ah, and there were a couple pieces of my hair that didn't quite get into that color selection. But you know what, guys? I'm not going to really like nitpick you at this point. I know you did the, the really fine, intricate, detailed work on that first image that you're going to submit to me also. So don't worry about it. You're good. Um, that will work for me. I know that this is... Um, you know, more of a challenging case. Okay, so look at there, we got our monochromatic. Okay, the next one is complementary. So let's take a look at what that means. Okay, that's when we have colors used on the opposite side of the wheel. So now you can pick any complementary colors that you want. Here's some examples. And then of course, you're gonna have to have a third color in there too. So it's gonna be like, you'll have a couple of complementary colors and then your third color, you can pick whatever you want. So you could even just go through and look at some of um, the work that we posted and look at some of the color schemes. What do you like? I mean, what looks good? So I'm thinking I'm going to go with like the blue and the orange and maybe throw in some red. So lock your monochromatic page, go to your complementary and unlock it. Zoom in a little bit so you can see what you're doing. 
Okay, and what I say? Blue and orange and red. So blue, orange, and red. Just gonna go ahead and start selecting myself. I'm already blue, so I'll just take that one. Hold down shift, remember to add. And ink. So yeah, I got my threshold up to 77. It's doing a really nice job of selecting everything. I'm gonna try to get these little pieces of hair out here that I, oops, and that was too much. I hit the wrong pixel. Grab my earring there. Okay. And then once again, it selected some things off to the side that I didn't want it to. So grab my lasso tool and hold down control and get rid of this other stuff going on around my shoulder. All right, that'll be perfect. So, hmm, should I be red? I'm gonna be blue. I'm already blue. I'm gonna just stick with blue. Hue and saturation. And let's go ahead and make me baby blue more so than go with lightness. I like that. Saturation. That's a cool color. Okay. So just get the color that you want. Click OK. Remember, we're still going to do the brightness and contrast. So you'll get your you'll get your blacks back because you lose those when you adjust your lightness. So go back in and get your blacks. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and save because it's freezing. There we go. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and select my background, or I could just do a selection invert. We've done that before, right? And then that puts the marching ants around the outside. And if I want to at that point, then I can just use my lasso tool and I can just, whoops, remember that grabs an inch. Change back to your lasso. Hit save if you freeze up like I do. Okay, hold down control because we're, it didn't like that. Hit control Z. Marching ants are going around the entire image right now. Okay. It's get crazy because it's got the whole entire image now selected except for me. So to subtract this little part of me, maybe I have to start in the inside. Oh, forget it. It's too complicated to think about it like that. So I'm just going to start from scratch. I'm going to do select none and I'm going to grab my little fuzzy tool and I'm going to click out here. My threshold's at 77. I already know if I take my threshold that high and try to get the other stuff, I'm going to get too much. Oh, <laughs> it's going to happen. What can I do? Try to get in there a little bit in my hair. Fun times. And you can do more than three areas, you guys. I don't want you to feel like you can only do three. You could do as many areas as you want to differently. Like if you want to go in and do the lips separately, you can totally do that. That'd be fun. Save and then um, I'm going to lasso, hold down control, and I'm just going along the edge of my horizon and circling stuff that doesn't go in it, like this on the water surface. Okay, what did I say I was gonna do? Blue and orange. So colors, color bit, hue and saturation. Let's make the sky orange. We have to find the orange. There we go. Blue and orange. Increase your saturation. Not a lot of saturation happening there, huh? That's okay. We'll get it on the lightness and darkness. There. Orange. I don't think that was exactly the shade I was going for. Well, that's pretty. I like that. Is it orange, though? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, I'm going to click OK. Save if it freezes. That didn't, that didn't work. Control-Z. 
Oh, shucks. I don't know why that didn't stick for some reason. Okay, I've got to go in here with my uh, lasso tool. Sometimes accidents happen. I don't know why, but they do. I think my computer might be a little bit possessed right now <laughs> because I'm running out of RAM. I'm gonna hit escape and I'm going to edit, redo, edit, redo. Okay, I'm back. Good, I was just able to hit redo. Sometimes you can, I don't know what's going on with my computer right now, but it's a little bit wonky. That's okay, sometimes that'll happen to you out there in TV land. Okay, so saturation, lightness, getting back to orange, my complementary colors, clicking OK. All right, I got it to stick that time. I'm going to go File, Save, and then um, this time I'm going to select None. And what did I say I was going to do? And I could leave the purple, but I wanted to do red. I was going to get crazy with color. So I'm grabbing my magic wand and I think I will increase my threshold so it's really easy to get all these purple hues. Hold down shift and just, whoops, look at that. It got too much. Hit control Z and go back. Um, shift, shift. I could just leave that like that and just see what happens. Going up to tools colors I mean hue and saturation and I just want to make that red let's see where are you red definitely is not wanting to be red is it that's about as close to red as I'm going to get right there. Let's see what happens if I intensify my saturation, take out my lightness. It does not want to be red. Maybe it wants to be green. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to color balance and let's see if I can do it from this direction. Ha ha ha. So see what I was saying? trying out your ooh I like ooh that looks cool I like that I want to keep that yeah okay I liked that that was fun I'll click OK on that <laughs> and select none I'm not I, I don't know what happened to my contrast I think when I was undoing things earlier somehow I lost the black that I'd gotten in there so Colors, brightness, contrast, heaven forbid, I may have just forgotten to beef up my contrast. That's always a possibility. Okay, so I've got my complementary colors. I've got my orange and my blue. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to leave it like that. All right. So you get the idea, right? I don't have to walk you through the last steps. Am I right or wrong? You know what you're doing now at this point. I hope so. Um, so for this quadrant down here, you would just go ahead and lock out your complementary, click on your analogous later, unlock it. Analogous is when you use three to five colors that are adjacent to each other or next to each other on the color wheel. So to decide which colors you're gonna do, maybe you wanna do like green and various numbers of blues or Maybe you want to do red and purple and blue. You decide. I'm just going to, um, you know, I'll walk you through a little bit here. So just shift, get my magic wand, get my hair selected again. And having everything already colorized right now makes it really easy for your computer to select stuff. Control Z because I went too far. My threshold's too high, lower my threshold, and then I can go in here and um, do a better job of selecting things without selecting the entire sky. Oops, control Z if you get in there and do too much. Might have to increase it just a touch. Anyway, I know that you guys can do this. You're awesome. 
And this uh, color, remember, oh, I like that color balance. Gonna use that again. I'm gonna increase red and ooh, look at that. Oh, hello. That looks cool. I love that. I think I'm just gonna keep that. I'm gonna click OK and save. And then for my sky, I just want you guys to have fun with this. Um, select your sky and I'm, I like the color balance feature. That is cool. I'm going, it, for some reason it doesn't want to give me any more red. I'm going to try shadows. You can adjust the shadows differently. That might make a difference. Eh, that's not helping. Huh. Oh well, what can you do? Just do your best. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hue and saturation. And it says here that I can adjust just the reds if I click on that. And I can just adjust the reds. That's another way to do hue and saturation. That's fun. Click up my saturation. Decrease my lightness. I really want to try to get red. There's my red. Okay. So do you see that the purpose of this assignment is basically to make you learn how all of these different color options work? Select none. And um, there we go. That looks pretty good. So if I'm looking at my analogous color wheel, I've got my red, I've got the blue, and then there is some purple right here. I'm going to show you another way. We can go to the color balance tool. Oops, not color balance. Hue and saturation. I'm going to uh, select anything that's magenta. So when I click on that, it's saying anything that's that color will, will change. So let's try and see what happens. Do you notice that the water is changing colors? Mm hmm. Yep. There. Kind of like that. A little more intense. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to color, I'm gonna to go to color balance and I'm going to get those shadows. Oh, look at that, it's doing the whole picture. I don't want it to do the whole picture. Cancel, cancel, cancel. I'm gonna to have to actually select these areas here. So holding down shift, increase my threshold so I can get it all at one time. That's cool, that works for me, I like that. Let's go ahead, I wanna get this more purple. So I'm going to color balance and I'm looking for a more intense shade of purple. Mm. Or maybe I just want to increase the, I'm telling you guys, it's just endless fun. And get purple and blue in there going okay and then make sure you're saving all the time brightness and contrast let's see if we can get a little oh that's cool that kind of matches yeah I like that going okay so that's my analogous color scheme where I've got colors from that same side of the color wheel all together select none zoom tool control to zoom out and I am having a blast. I've got one more and it is the triadic. So that's when you have three colors evenly spaced from each other. So um, I like that idea of bringing some yellow in. I haven't had yellow, I haven't had green either. I could do like green, purple, and orange. That might be fun or yellow, blue, and red. So for that last one, Lock your analogous layer, unlock your triadic, make sure that that layer is selected. Zoom tool, zoom in so you can see what you're doing. And um, zoom back out if you went too far with your control button. Okay, and let's see. What did I say? Green is gonna be like green. I could do green, orange, and dark purple. Watch this, this will be good. Just look at your color wheel and pick some colors that you wanna do. Green, orange, and purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this area down here. 
look, my, th my threshold's too high. It's just selecting everything. So I'm gonna go to select none again. And let's try this again with a lower <laughs> threshold. <laughs> And you know, your design can be completely different than mine. Don't feel like you have to copy what I'm doing at all because I am definitely not the guru. Okay, so file save so I can get my tools to work and controlling and holding down and getting rid of some things that were selected that I didn't want in my image. Where did I start? somewhere around here okay green did I say let's do green so colors that's not green there's green and yellow okay so I'm gonna go with okay there hue and saturation let's see if I can get the color green that I wanted intensify that if I want to miss this little purple part of the ocean up here but that's okay I'm gonna just go with that for now and bring my lightness down oh that's a fun effect I like that okay all right gonna select none grab my lasso tool get up here and select all this loveliness here that's gonna be fun the way there's a line there and I'm going to make this powerful orange color at least that's my goal <laughs> we'll see if I get that pretty rainbows pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows what color are the unicorns pink? What are they dancing on? Rainbows. Oops. Okay, so there's my green, there's my orange. Go in okay, I'm gonna select none. And, um, you know, because of the nature of Andy Warhol stuff, that I'm not even going to let that bother me. And I am going to, uh, what was it, green, orange, and a dark purple color. So I'm going to select myself now. And, um, you know, I don't, I'm going to hit Control Z, Control Z. I'm going to leave some of that the way that it is. And I'm just going to select this right here. And, I'm gonna just get a little more creative this way. And I'm going to try to get a really dark purple. There it is. That's the purple I'm looking for. Nice. Okay. Don't forget your brightness and contrast. So, ooh. Lighten me up. Forget my sunglasses dark. There we go. Get her those sunglasses in there. okay I'm going to go ahead and hit select done and there it is I've got my green my purple and my orange for my triad and I love it zoom out view zoom fit image in window so it's not perfect I know but it's okay um, do your tribute. Show me that you know what monochromatic is, what complementary colors are, what analogous color scheme is, and what the triad is. Have fun with it, and we will show these off in our critique. 
you are going to be going file, save, okay? And remember, you also had your original one that you hopefully file, save as, let's do your first name, Rachel G. Colorization, okay? That's where you practice using all of those tools and getting in really close in that first video. Save. Okay, and so you've got both of your GIMP files, your .xcf files. Now you're gonna export. File, export as, okay, so where is Rachel? Oh, here I am, Rachel G colorization. It's already changed it to a ping for me, but I am going to save it as a JPEG. Remember, JPEGs don't take up as much room. Type dot jpg and then click export and it will ask you what quality you want that depends on the file size as it is right now i can afford to beef that quality up a touch i said under 500 kilobytes there we go 484 is perfect click export excellent and then you see where i'm going back to that one now let's go back to this one file save as there we are. Oh, we're not saving. Oh, good. File export. Exporting. It already changed it to JPEG because that's what I did on my last one. Click export. My image size box comes up. Click on the preview. It says it's 2.1 megs. I've really got to bring that down. I need it to be under 500. Oh, I'm almost there. Perfect, 496 kilobytes, I'm under 500. Click export. And there was one other thing that I was gonna suggest that you do. If you're feeling like you're a little overwhelmed, it's just all too much for you, um, that's fine. But if you'd like to add some filter to it, you can. You could do that. Here's the rectangular select tool. I can just uh, select one of my quadrants and go up to the filters menu. I've got to click save. Go up to filters and you can play around with the different filters that there are like um, Let's see. I loved clouds. Clouds was really fun. I did. I think I did fog last time, and that was really cool. The filters will bring up dialog boxes and allow you to increase or decrease uh, the turbulence on this one, for example, and it has fog color right there. I can change the fog color, so maybe I want that color of the fog to be blue to go with the color of me. Of course, I could pick a completely different color. I could go with a purple fog. So I don't have any purple in there yet. But I think I'll just go with the blue. Try to keep it on par with what I've got in there. Maybe a, a light blue that doesn't have anything to do with the color scheme because Andy Warhol was kind of cool like that. He would just pick colors that just didn't even seem remotely related to what was happening in the picture. I like that about his work. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and see what it does. And there we go. It added a little fog on there. That was a fun filter. You can go select none, grab a hold of your rectangle tool. Again, you could go to your monochromatic piece here and go up to filters and just see what happens you just never know what's going to be happening it's got i have no idea what this means so i'm just going to go ahead and click okay and just see what it does it's the only way to figure out what filters do and i honestly didn't notice a difference i'm going to hit Control z and I'll go up to filters again and let's see there's drop shadow I can try that okay 
not really notice a change in that. Control Z, I didn't see anything happen. Edge detect, generic, combine, artistic. If we go to cartoon, click OK. So I don't know, sometimes I guess the filters aren't that great. <laughs> and this is just kind of like what you go through when you try on the filters. It's adding noise, it's bumping it up. Did you notice a difference? I didn't see any difference. Mm. Guess what? Part of the reason why we're not seeing a difference is because I just noticed I was working in the wrong layer. Okay, and I'm locking those. And remember, I was telling you this. I'm like, if you're sitting there and nothing's happening, check to make sure you have that layer selected. And look, it's even locked. So I am a perfect example of what I told you not to do. So <laughs> I'm gonna go in and do try my filters now. Let's go into the artistic cartoon one and see if it actually does something. Oh, look at that. Now it's doing something, how fun. Ooh, that's cool. I'm gonna give it a try. Uh-oh. Hmm. Well, can't say I'm totally crazy. I'm thinking control Z about that. But I think it's got potential. I'm gonna try it again. And this time maybe I'm just not going to have it be quite so intense. That's pretty cool. So um, feel free to go in and try out the different filters in there and apply a filter to each quadrant. I think that would be an awesome addition. Oh, look, I'm already doing the same thing. I've got to click off of monochromatic and get to my analogous later and unlock it if I want to see any changes on there. Filters, artistic, hmm, GIMP Prussian is a... Oh, let's see what happens with Gimp Prussianist. Um, hmm. Fun. Smash. Okay. It smashed it. It just kind of blurred it. I'm going to hit Control-Z. Okay, I'm going to try Oilify. Ooh, it makes it look like an oil painting. Oh, I like this. Oh, I'm gonna like this a lot for sure. Like the way it gives you a little preview to see how it's gonna look. Oh, how beautiful. Click OK. It's loading. It's loading. Hmm. I don't think I oilified it enough. I'm gonna try it again. Okay, so I changed my oilifying settings on there and I got a different effect. Anyway, at the end, select none when you get it all done. Remember that you've got your edit undo. So when you do a filter and you don't like it, undo it before you do another one. Make sure you're in the right layers. Make sure your layers are unlocked. Um, just enjoy the heck out of this project. Make sure that you're doing your brightness and contrast and you're making sure that you got things popping. All right, I'm going to cancel. When you're all done, remember, you've got to click Save Again, and you've got to export your changes. Export as, export, replace. You don't have to replace it, actually. I'm not going to replace it. I'm going to click Export. And no, I'm not going to replace it. You know what? I want to keep that original one that I did. I'm going to say this one is with filters. Okay, so change the name. Add filters if you decide to go back and add your filters. Click export. Make sure that you're below 500. I am, it's already got it set for me. Perfect, great. So when I go to upload this, all right, I'm going into content. I'm going into, uh, what is it? Week three, project, Andy Warhol. There's my Dropbox. You'll click on the Dropbox. You'll click upload. You'll find your pictures. You'll go to your image design folder. Do, 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 where you are. You'll go to wherever you save your images. Here's mine. I want your 
<clears throat> I want your colorization. I need your JPEG and your GIMP file. So I need both of these. I'm holding down shift to select them both. I'm going to see if it, I don't know if it'll open more than one. Let's see. Hold down control if you want to select them both. So I've got both my GIMP colorization and the JPEG colorization because I need to see both of those. I'm going to just see if it'll do both. Sweet, it did. There's my colorization JPEG and my colorization.xcf. So that was that first part that you did. And then I'm going to upload the, um, here's my tribute without the filters and here's my tribute with the filters. So I'll go ahead and take my GIMP file and I'm just gonna select it, hold down control and select the other ones. I'll click open. Now that's my XCF file. Do you see how long it's taking to upload? That's because the GIMP file is big. Okay, perfect. And then um, it's got my JPEG of this one, and this one should be a JPEG too. You can actually click on these and open them up and see what they look like. Woohoo! fun. Okay, you're not done yet, okay? So um, remember I was telling you if you used any filters, let me know which ones you used. I used clouds, I used um, Oilify, and I can't remember specifically the other one. But if you can remember the names of them, let me know um, what were the cool ones that you used. And then you have to hit submit. Once you've submitted, it says right here, submissions. And here they all are. And you can go out of your Dropbox. And you can come back into your Dropbox and see that, yep, they're there. Everything's good. Mrs. Jarrell is going to get this. Okay, everybody, I know this was a long video, but have fun. Uh, it should take you, you know, this is an hour-long video. It should take you, you know, two hours at least to get your project done. I'm expecting three to five hours worth of work probably if it's your first time using GIMP. So have fun with it. Don't beat yourself up. I recommend that you work in 45-minute periods. Okay, don't sit and work for three hours and get all stressed out and frustrated. Work for 45 minutes, shut your computer down, save everything, of course, and then come back the next day, work 45 minutes. It's a week-long project. It's due on Friday. Awesome. Thank you.